Good morning, everybody. It is another beautiful morning here on the ranch, and it is time to milk, something you haven't seen yet. So we are gonna bring Sadie in and get to milking. We're gonna be making some cheese here. So the first thing we need is milk. So let's get going. All right, so first things first is that I always get prepped. Um, we bring down some uh, hot water and we mix in a little bit of chlorhexidine. It's just a, a, a cleaning solution that we use to clean her teats before we milk. Um, and then we have our milking pail and our rag bucket for our rag that we use to clean her teats with. I get all this ready that way when she gets in. Um, it's a quick and easy process. Sadie's really good. We don't even have to use the rope halter on her um, to get her to the stanchion. As long as we let her out, she knows the routine. She comes up, she jumps, she's ready for her treats in the morning. So let's get started. Our morning audience while we milk. It's a little Freya. And there's it. All right. Come on, Sadie. You're going to make a liar out of me. Come on. You know what to do. Good girl. Stuff. Not only does it clean her teats, it also cleans your hands off before milking. What I do is I just do one or two squirts in my palm just to check to make sure that there's no mastitis or any weird abnormalities with the milk. Everything looks good. There's no clumping, no discoloration. So it's time to get milking. So this side feels a little empty. We're gonna go uh, get the other side. Now this side, she's usually a little bit more sensitive on. I don't know why, but this one takes a little. Oh, I know why you're fidgety. You almost had a treat. You want the rest? There you go. Let's go ahead and get her uh, cleaned up and back in the pasture and we'll get this back in the house, getting it chilled. Uh, the goal with raw milk, whenever you're gonna use it for your own personal consumption, is uh, you want it to get down below uh, 40 degrees within an hour of milking. That helps alleviate any bacteria growth or anything like that that could be potentially harmful. Um, so let's get going. Hey, show me your teats. Then we use our iodine solution, and it's just a teat dip. It just helps prevent any bacteria or anything from using her teat opening as a highway for infection. All right, back at the house. Now it's time to put the milk in our mason jar so it can go and chill in the freezer for an hour to get down to the appropriate temperature. We actually use one of the uh, canning funnels with its little metal filter just to get any uh, large particles. If there's hair or sometimes a little flock of hay or something will get in there. That catches it all and filters it so that there's no uh, weird stuff or creepy crawlies in our milk. All right, so let's see 
how much we got today. And then all of our stainless steel milk and supplies all go into the dishwasher every day to be cleaned and sterilized. Oh man, we got ripped off today. Not even half a quart. Hmm. Oh well. Better than nothing. Okay, so welcome to our kitchen. So now that you've seen where we get our milk from, um, now it's time to make that cheese we were talking about. So we're actually making some cheese from a kit that my mom sent us as um, birthday presents. It's from Urban Cheese Craft. Um, so this is like an all-in-one kit. Apparently it makes eight batches worth, which is kind of cool because you can experiment, fail and succeed as many times as you can with this one uh, little kit. So let's see how it goes. So let's talk about the ingredients. All right, so it says, let's make some fresh goat cheese. The ingredients, you're gonna need a half a gallon of goat's milk. And with ours, because it's raw and fresh, we're definitely gonna make sure we shake it up so that nothing is stuck to the sides. Um, so, half a gallon of goat's milk, or two quarts. Uh, one teaspoon of citric acid. They actually send a whole little bag of citric acid. Uh, a quarter cup drinking water, so we'll use our measuring cup for that, and one teaspoon of cheese salt, which they also send, it's called flake salt. And then supplies you're going to need, you're going to need measuring cups and spoons. Yep. Uh, we're going to need a large pot with at least a half gallon capacity, a thermometer, they sent us the thermometer, comes with the kit, uh, a mixing spoon fine cheese cloth, which they sent with the kit, a colander, and a large bowl. The large bowl is optional, so it does give you some neat tips um, to use the excess weight. Uh, you can either throw it out in the sink, or if you save it with the bowl, you, it has um, recipes and different things that you can actually use the whey for later on. So that's pretty cool. It says that the whey lasts for about one to two days in the fridge, or you can freeze it until you want to use it later. Um, but it has tips like um, to thicken up soups, like uh, broccoli cheese soup or uh, cream of mushroom soup, stuff like that. Um, so it's, we're probably going to save it and, and use it. Uh, and then just the cheese molds. So these two little cheese molds that they sent along um, to press the cheese down into a nice little hard block. And it also does talk about um, different types of cheeses that you can make with this. So if you just stick to the, the original recipe on here, is the easy soft spreadable um, cheese that we're gonna make. Um, but we're gonna, or, or it tells you to make, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next step further and we're gonna do the firm goat cheese. Where we... So let's get started, okay? Okie dokie. Step one, we're going to mix one teaspoon of the citric acid into a quarter cup of drinking water. So let me get the drinking water. Quarter cup water, one teaspoon of citric acid. Stir until stir until dissolved and set aside. Next step is to heat the milk. So the first instruction says heat the milk to 190 degrees on medium heat. Um, stir and check often to prevent any scorching and any skin buildup on the surface of the milk and adjust heat if needed. Um, it says then turn the heat off to low or turn the heat to low and thoroughly stir in the citric acid solution once it's reached 190 degrees. However, we are going to do the firm goat cheese. So we're going to heat this goat's milk to a boil at 212 and then we're gonna to continue to follow the instructions from there. So let's get this going.
almost at the temp. Just make sure you keep stirring your milk. That way nothing sticks to the bottom and it doesn't burn it. Now they sent us a thermometer, but I prefer my instant read. So this one, and don't let it hit the bottom of the pot because you're gonna get a false read. So it looks like we're right around 150, we're getting there. A little bit longer. Almost there, we're at 205. So this, for the harder cheese, we need to get it to 212. And I would suggest next time a shorter pot because this is very hard to get, take the temp on without steaming my hand. All right, it is at the right temp, it is boiling. So now we're gonna add in the citric acid solution. We're gonna put it on warm. All right, so now we're gonna stir that. And we're gonna continue cooking the curds for one minute while moving them very gently. Turn off the heat. And it says not to break up the curves. And you can already see it's curding up. So that's about a minute. So now we're going to, it should cover it and wait 10 minutes. Remove the pot from the heat, cover, and do not disturb it for 10 minutes. So I'm also gonna remove it off of this, even though the heat's off. Let's just make sure that cools. All right, see you in 10. All right, so the 10 minutes is up. So now it's time to uh, strain out the curd from the whey. And uh, first it says to cut your cheesecloth in half, which we did, and then it says to wet it. Um, so we already got that done for you. We're gonna put that in the, the colander that's in the bowl, because we're gonna save the whey, and we're gonna try it with some of those extra little fun recipes that they gave us. like cottage cheese. Okay. All right. It says allow the curds to drain until they look like thick oatmeal. So apparently our curds are overachieving because they already look like this. Yeah, it looks really good. And it says not to worry that if, you're, if your curds are really, really small, because ours are very small. It's like um, fine... Um, thin cottage cheese. Yeah, fine cottage cheese. cheese. Got it, I can find the word. are going to drain now for about five or ten minutes and then we can start to salt them and after that we're going to scoop them into the molds so we're going to set the timer for five minutes so the curds have been draining now for about two minutes they're still kind of steamy Starting to look like oatmeal. So what we're doing now is we're actually gonna um, 
use the molds that they sent us instead of just making like a round ball of cheese. And it does suggest to either use um, like cheesecloth or even a, a little bit of saran wrap to mold it. But because we want a little bit more of a firmer, drier, uh, crumbly like feta cheese, uh, we're gonna put the cheesecloth so it can continue to drain off um, excess whey once we press it into the mold. But the cheesecloth allows the cheese to come out of it easier without sticking to the mold. Okay, so it has been another five minutes, ten minutes, something like that. What was it? Five minutes. Okay, so it's been another five minutes and it is time to season the curves. So we're gonna add a recipe calls for one teaspoon of salt and then you go from there for taste and we're also going to add in some fresh um, fine cracked pepper um, it says that is apparently a crowd pleaser for this cheese so we're going to sprinkle some of that in and we're going to kind of fluff it up with a fork to mix it in because you don't want to squash, squash it around too much until you're putting it into the mold Mixing in that salt and pepper. And kind of peeling it off the bottom of the cheesecloth. All right, that looks good and mixed. Let's get it into the molds. Pressing very hard, just enough to kind of stick it together. You don't want to over press it. All right. So now that they're in their molds, it says that we need to chill them in the fridge for at least a half an hour. Um, so we're gonna do that. Yeah, but first, let's give them a taste. Yeah, the tasting spoon. Robert is the house taste tester. Tanginka's goat milk. It's good. It does taste very good. So let's get these in the fridge. Ooh, this is hot. So we're not going to save both quarts of whey because it looks like I have a whole nother quart right here. Um, we're just going to save one quart to experiment with. The rest we'll, we'll toss out. Actually, I'll let the rest cool and I can give this to the chickens. They'll eat it. Then you can actually soak their feed in the whey. Um, or if you're raising pigs for consumption, you can actually soak their feed in the whey and it, um, it increases their protein and fat intake. It's really good for them and they love it. All right, so the 30 minutes is up. Let's get the cheese out of the fridge. Okay, so it basically looks the same as when we put it in, but let's see, it's still a little warm at the bottom too. 
Let's take one of them out, see how it looks, and we'll let the other one continue to chill. Okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Formed up nicely. So that looks really good. So I'm assuming it's gonna taste basically the same as the crumbles we were nibbling on, but let's give it a try. I'd say it's a success. We're gonna let the other one that's still in the mold chill for a little while longer in the fridge. Um, it does say that the firm goat cheese will get firmer um, and the flavor will develop more as it sits in the fridge. So um, other than that, we hope you like this video. Uh, we're gonna bring you some more videos like this here in the kitchen with us. We'll have some canning videos and some other cooking videos. But other than that, if you did like this, remember to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, see you guys. You can just let it let it roll, I guess. Okay. It's fine. Smell things. Like that. Julia Child. Around the moon.